the first ever T100 for the On women. On your mark. And they're in the water. And once again, we'll be able to pick out a few athletes based on their caps. And one of those being Lucy Charles Barclay will have the pink swim cap. And you see it already, Rick, uh, Lucy Charles Barclay. She does not mess around at the start. She is quick off the mark, and she's on the far left there in that pink cap. She's already making a little bit of a lead. We'll see if anyone can grab onto her feet. So Lucy Charles Barclay has just exited ahead of Lucy Buckingham. They were swimming hard. You could tell it when you were looking at them really close. They were swimming very hard. This gap has grown. Sarah Perez Seller is just about to get to the Aussie exit as well. And the chase group with Sky Munch and Holly Lawrence and India Lee, and uh, they've, they've almost caught her. Paula Finlay is still on the back of that group too. Um, so here we have Sarah Perez Seller. She's about 25 seconds back and is bleeding time to this chase group with Sky Munch and India Lee at the front. Just exiting right now in the Aussie exit, up this steep uphill. India Lee looks good, swim cap fall, fallen off, but fix that. That's one of the benefits of the Aussie exit. Paula Finlay on the back of this group is massive. They're about 35 seconds off the lead. That's potentially further ahead than what some would have anticipated to see Paula Finlay. She's lost a little bit of ground in the Aussie exit, but if she can get back there, that's a really good position. And then about 10 seconds behind Paula Finlay, we've got Kat Matthews exiting the water. 45-ish seconds down. She's got herself a little bit isolated there, and that second lap could be tricky because the rest of the girls have all got a big group to work to, towards, whereas she's by herself. Daniela Reef out of the water a further 10, 15 seconds down, as well as Emma Pallant Brown and Tamara Jewett. That's a strong run group. That's a group we've got to keep our eye on. They're about a minute back. Whether they can make up some ground to Lucy in this second lap, but that is a substantial gap. Emma Pallant Brown, Tamara Jewett, too, we've got to keep our eye on as the race progresses, particularly on the run. And Lucy come out the water first here, side by side. Let's hope for a smooth transition. And um, it's actually quite a short way from here, even though they have to run a little dog leg to go past the bikes and then sort of re realign. And Jack is down there. Lucy Charles Barclay, this is pretty much the dream scenario for her. She knows that Lucy Buckingham's been sick. Everyone in the paddock knows that. So she's going to love that she has a, one of the world's best cyclists with her to push, push the pace rather than have to do it by herself. She can also follow her technical lines on the technical part of this course. Sometimes people say Lucy's technical ability isn't the best in the world compared to her straight speed power. So to be able to follow Lucy Buckingham's lines, if that does play out like that, is perfect for Lucy. You can see they've got a massive lead. Probably... Probably a bigger lead than you would have expected given where they were halfway through the swim. The other women haven't even come in yet. Sarah Perez Salah, Holly Lawrence, India Lee driven group. Paula Finlay's managed to get on the back of it as well coming into T1 too. This is a really strong chase group as well actually. Paula Finlay, I mentioned that Lucy Buckingham is one of the best cyclists in the sport. In that category as well is Paula Finlay, is India Lee. This is a very strong group that will get straight on to chasing the two Lucys. And perfect situation for someone like India Lee, who's a really strong runner as well as being a great cyclist. So, I mean, probably a position that's a little ahead of where a lot of people would have expected to see her and Paula Finlay playing out perfectly for those two as well. got Lucy Byram and Kat Matthews coming in. Two of the unbackable favourites with Daniela Reef yes. and Emma Pallant-Brown. So important that Emma Pallant-Brown gets on to Kat Matthews and Lucy Byram's wheel and this becomes a working group. This here is the group. If we're going to see someone make a big move, it's most likely to come from one of these women. Lucy Byron was in here quickly, out just as quickly. Kat Matthews and Emma Pallet brown will fight for that wheel because they know that outside of maybe Lucy Buckingham and Lucy Charles up the front, that's the, that's the lady who will be moving fastest on this bike course. They will hang on for dear life. They'll do whatever it takes to hold that wheel. Daniela Reef now as well. Extra firepower to the group. Tamara Jewett, Tamara Jewett is the last out, the slowest through transition. Again, her race depends on her being able to hold this really strong bike group. This is a bit of a new Lucy Charles Barkley on the bike. She looks like she's completely optimised everything. 
to see her go in front and be the one pushing the pace, even on a technical course like this, with, with an athlete like Lucy Buckingham, is surprising. I'm wondering how much of that is Lucy just taking charge and being a new version of herself on the bike versus Lucy Buckingham being sick. But it's really imp impressing me how Lucy is looking on the bike the last six months and showing it again here. And right now, India leads the fastest on the bike, even though she was ranked fourth in this field. She's the one who is putting down the best laps, and that has her fourth. Pretty good day to be from Great Britain if uh, you're in this field. As you see the top four up there. Well, the, Lucy. the Union Jack is uh, taking uh, residence in the top four in this race today, so uh, very impressive. But I do have to say, Jan, um, given the fact that she wasn't feeling well and wasn't sure if she was going to start, it is impressive that she's able to keep up with Lucy Charles Barclay. Uh, you know, maybe on another day she's riding away from her, but I seriously doubt it. Lucy Charles Barclay is the cream of the crop when it comes to racing the bike, obviously swimming. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it looks like Lucy Buckingham is working pretty hard here to, to stay in contact. Yeah, it looks like Lucy Byram and Kat Matthews have passed Paula Finlay. So they have, and they've passed her on the left, which in this technical course we've heard from the referees is going to be permissible as long as it's a safe pass, and she did go around the outside. It looks like her day is over. She has decided to call it a day. One of her teammates, um, she would be aware of the fact that she's allowed to keep going oh, no. yeah, breaking out in tears and that's, that's what it is it's, it's heartbreaking yeah, it's when, hard to watch you on. when you it come to, a, to an event like this and you know you're not at 100% it's just so hard to let you know the race go and just not be able to give your all and not show your all um, it shows how much it means to her really. as we are now seeing Lucy Buckingham off the bike and the tank is empty we knew coming in after her husband Mark there told us that she had food poisoning earlier. We were surprised she made it to the fin or the start line and towed the line. Had a great performance through the swim, stayed right on the heels of Lucy Charles Barclay. And then through about over half actually of the ride, the bike ride, she was able to stay in that second position. Well, I'll remind you again, Daniela Reef has announced that this will be her final year as a pro triathlete, but she's still got a lot of boxes to tick, and top of the list is the T100. Seeing Tamara Jewett here, uh, like many athletes today, deciding to pull the pin, and I think the nature of this course, because of the loops, it is way more prone to have pullouts because you get lapped and then can't unlap. I would love you to ask these athletes how the transition from daylight to nighttime has changed their lines and how they see this course. Because it definitely the course looks different at night under the lights than it did when the sun was shining down on this track. So it'll be interesting to see if the mindset has changed now that it's a little bit darker in some areas. She sits on Lucy Byram's wheel because Paula Finlay's made a point for the large majority of the day uh, to sit up and make sure she's at the back. Oh, as she throws off her dark visor. Yeah. That does tell you it's very dark out there, and it looks like it's only getting darker and darker with every lap. And we believe this is oh. Emma Pellant Brown who no, stopped again. on the track. Take a look here. Oh. Yep, that's yes. Emma Pellant Brown. Definitely not. And not sure what the reason was behind this, but anytime you see those ambulance lights, you start to worry a little bit. Yeah. So hope she's okay. Well, it can't be that bad if she's managed to get off and and, and stop. We you can see the water running down on her legs, so she's obviously still sweating profusely. She has had a history at this track before as well. She's yeah. had a very very dark incident happened here a few years ago with heat stroke and dehydration and, and apparently we're hearing that she she was loaded onto a stretcher and put into the ambulance yeah so we really hope everything's okay there as she rolled into transition and uh Indy Lee <laughs> taking the time to stop her stop her, her watch her, her garmin her, her garmin and uh get an accurate power file but look how close these two are. They're going to be coming out of T2 and running together. Well, this is the first time Lucy's taken a breath. She is definitely taking it very conservatively into transition two, taking her time. Um, it's 
to, to catch her breath and take a rest. She had a bit of a struggle there with her helmet, so it looks like Indy might even be overtaking her in transition. No, nope, she's not. She's out. And she's looking right. She's old fashioned head right to head. For somebody who's just led 82k of the race. <laughs> This is not unfamiliar territory for Lucy Charles Barkley. Uh, a little bit unfamiliar to have company. As Lucy Byram leads the chase group into the transition ahead of Holly Lawrence, Cat Matthews, and Paula Finley. Direction. Oh, oh Cat Matthews. Cat Matthews. Cat Matthews. It looks like she's cramping up oh, and she no. had to stop. Oh, come on. Yeah, that's. The left calf. When it's so humid like this, you're just losing so much salt. Oh, she, you could yeah, see. Yeah, she's, she's like, I can't, yeah. I can't run. Like, Paula camaraderie is just next her. level. But uh, yeah, she's tough. Cat Matthews, obviously being uh, part of the British Army, she has definitely gone through some toughness. But yeah, like, she looks stressed. She actually looks stressed. Oh. Has she gone to a calf there or she was just unclipping her pedal? No, uh, she was just opening her shoes there, I think. But she I did look back at her up. partner, Mark, there. Oh, she was counting the laps. She miscounted oh, the laps. She missed the laps. She transition. She missed it. And she missed it. Yeah. It's uh, Mark. Here's Mark with her um, husband Cat, saying, Cat get, off, get off the course. And she's saying, no, I'm going to keep going. Don't touch me. Yeah. This is the <laughs> thing about seconding uh, on the course because, of course, in triathlon, that is not allowed. As soon as you receive outside help, that is an instant DQ. <laughs> and here you can see <laughs> you talk to her, Mark, just talking to the official. <laughs> you talk to her. She's not listening to me. Maybe the, the level of emotion we're seeing here could be because she knows it's something more sinister and serious. And she has huge plans this year, so we really hope it's not. But... It sort of seems like it might be. Difference between these two. Lucy now going for that ice bag as well. She's missed it. That would have cost her a second trying to get an ice towel. Um, it's obviously still warm out there. And, um, you know, there is... Oh, Indy's coming through whilst uh, Marta Sanchez is just getting out of the way. Thank you. Right, guys, back to you, because I can see lots happening at the front. Definitely a lot happening. And right now, a new leader for the women as India Lee has gone by Lucy Charles Barkley. Let's see if Lucy will tack on to the back here of India Lee and what she has left. Wow. Did you see the aggression she, she, she put into that? I mean, her, fa her fa whole facial demeanor changed as she came close. She really made sure to try and get a little surge to hopefully not take Lucy with her. And this is the first time we've seen a change at the top of the leaderboard. What a way to take the series with both hands and rip it and grip it. We really and haven't seen Holly race this well in years. 2018? 2016? Maybe? Yeah. yeah, I feel like around yeah. 16, she won the world 70.3 World Champs in Mooloolaba. Yeah. And she raced very well for a couple of years after that. And then she's kind of had a lull. So you, you alluded to a few, you know, personal issues that she had um, and... And those were sort of sorted out, but uh, it seems like La Holly Lawrence is, is back and, and, and showing tonight that, you know, she is an athlete to be watched as we move through this T100 series. Historically, in the last few years, I should say, it's either been a Daniela that's dominant and winning or Daniela's sort of outside the top five, more likely 10th to 15th. So Daniela coming in, obviously not as dominant as we have seen her before, but really solid um, all around today. So moving into fifth place, Daniela, I mean, this is kicking off the season very well for her, and obviously she knows it's a long season. There's a little more of a grimace now out of India Lee. She can hear... Is she starting to realize? Yeah, that? she can She can hear the, the crowd. She can hear the announcer here in the... The racetrack, India Lee looks back. She won't see anyone. <laughs> yeah, the, this is just mind blowing for her. I think coming in, I'm, I'm sure she dreamt of this and, and you have to have had some belief that you could do this, but to actually have it happen. And especially as we said, no one picked India Lee to win. The 35 so. year old Brit makes it onto the carpet. She's given the high fives, and she has just stunned the world. India Lee 
is going to win the first ever T100. And it starts here at Homestead Miami Speedway. She'll walk across and grab the banner. India Lee wins T100. Yeah, a lot of emotion there. You can see <laughs> she, she almost can't believe it. And, you know, a, a hug from the goat, a hug from, from Jan. Um, here comes second in Lucy Charles Barclay. And still a smile on her face as she's thanking the fans for being there. Yeah, I, I think Lucy Charles Barclay will be happy with that performance. The second place is nothing to be, you know, ashamed of. As, as we said, it's a long season, a lot of racing ahead, and, and she led for a lot of that race and almost pulled off the victory. Indy Lee had a special performance, and, uh, and that's what it takes, special performances. And it's going to be an all-British podium. Yes. One, two, three. Such a powerhouse nation. And this will do it. Rounding out the podium with a third-place finish here. At T100 Miami, it is Holly Lawrence. <laughs> I think that's Jan cheering in the, <laughs> in the background. <laughs> uh, so good to see. Yeah, we'll take a look at uh, the finish of the top 10. You see the fastest on the swim. You see Charles Barclay, the fastest. On the bike was India Lee, and then it was impressive. The run that she was able to put together, India Lee forging her name now as one of the favorites here in T100. With her win, it was Charles Barkley and Holly Lawrence rounding out the podium all the way down to an impressive finish for Kaidi Kiwioya, uh, finishing in 10th today.